Hey everybody, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I wanted to talk to you today about embroidery, machine embroidery placement tips and tricks that I've kind of learned over my time of doing this. I'm going to start out by saying I am not a professional embroiderer. I do not do it for money. Um, but I like to embroider. I love to machine embroider. And um, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of different gadgets out on the market that can help you do placement and, um, you know, just get things right um, on, on garments that are, or, or projects, you know, like a baby blanket or something, that are, that are pretty cut and dry. And uh, Designs and Machine Embroidery has a whole bunch of placement gizmos and gadgets and things that you can use. I've purchased a lot of those and um, sometimes I use them, a lot of times I don't. It just depends. If you are embroidering on a man's shirt, uh, that's pretty cut and dry. Um, a lot of, t you know, men are straight, They most of them. <laughs> most of them. Where you're going to embroider, it's pretty straight, right? <laughs> um, and uh, I got, I think this is, design this is a designs and machine embroidery this is called uh, embroiderers little helper and it's a pocket guide see this it's got a little um, right here across the bottom it has a little measuring stick and you would put it over a pocket like this and then you would depending on how high the design is it has little you know how tall the design is and it helps you to center and place it where it goes there's also another one that I found that's helpful, and this is also Designs and Machine Embroidery. Um, they have it for uh, t-shirts and uh, right and left placement. This little cutout right here goes under a button if there is one, or this sits at the neckline, and it helps you to decide where you would put these things and where your design goes and whatnot. Um, Everybody who buys an embroidery machine, we all get a hoop that comes with the machine and it comes usually with a grid of some sort that um, fits into the little notches and you're supposed to put your design in the middle. Not everything's really easy to hoop and in the last, uh, when I was doing the Freedom Quilt, I showed you guys how I floated um, the fabric on top of the hoop and sometimes you have to do that so a target sticker is very handy so uh, designs and machine embroidery offers these you don't have to buy these you can go get the little price tags like at the dollar store that you would use at a garage sale and just do yourself a little 90 degree angle on there um, but I don't want to get too disjointed in what I'm talking about it has a little arrow that tells you that's the up, you know, and let's say here's your fabric and you decide that your design is going to go right there. Okay, perfect. Um, not everybody who does machine embroidery goes in whole hog and spends thousands of dollars right off the bat and buys the machines that have a camera in them that will find, um, I think this is proprietary to brother, but I'm not sure, or baby lock. The little snowman okay I never knew what snowmen were um, I heard joy mentioning snowmen and I thought what <laughs> until I got a machine that had a camera in it and see this snowman right here okay the camera will look for the orientation of the little circle as the head and the big circle is the body and there's your crosshairs and regardless of how you have hooped your garment, crooked or whatever, it's going to automatically rotate the design to make it the way you want to go. Those, that's a wonderful feature. Wonderful. Um, if you have one of those machines, if you don't have one of those machines, you've got to do it the old-fashioned way. And there's a, like I was saying, there's a lot of gizmos and stuff that you can get in tools. Um, I purchased that Designs and Machine Embroidery. It's a packet of clear plastic templates. Very handy. Love those. Use them all the time. Can't find them since I rearranged my sewing room. I looked all over this morning 
Obviously, he didn't look everywhere because I can't find him. But <clears throat> so ideally, um, if this is where you decide, you know, you, you take a little sticker and you decide that's where you want your, um, your design to go. What they want you to do is to take the little crosshairs on your grid that comes along with it. You put the grid in the hoop. You position. You get the crosshairs just right on that target sticker. You hold everything pretty straight, as straight as you can. I have heard to put rubber on the back of some of these, um, like that non-skid drawer liner stuff. Pick it up, put it in the hoop, put it on. Doink around with it until it is where you want it to be. Press it in and hoop it. And ideally, this is what it ought to look like. So, if you're doing something that is real easy to hoop, that's great. Um, it's fiddly, but it works. If you're doing something that's not easy to hoop, like... If you're trying to hoop something and there's a seam in it, let's say there's a princess seam that goes right through it uh, on a lady's garment, that's it may or may not work out. And you will fuss with it and fuss with it and it will make you absolutely stupid crazy. And it takes the fun out of machine embroidery, just the placement part and the hooping, which is why I float a lot of my garments. I will um, hoop the stabilizer and then smooth out where I want it to fit. The problem with that is, if you don't have, uh, this is for those of you that don't have one of those cameras that uses the snowman. The problem with that is when you go to float something, let me get this. So let's say I've hooped the stabilizer, right? And you go to float something. Well, now where are your lines? Where's your center? You can't tell. You get to guess. That's always a challenge too. Designs and Machine Embroidery does make this little thing. It's called a Personal Alignment Laser Pal. I I like this. I have used it a lot. It This is the little desktop one and uh, I'll show you how this works. Okay, so um, there's a couple of different ways you can float um, your fabric to line it up to float it and um, I'll just mention this right now because I forgot to say it earlier they, these are washers they're big washers this thing has a tendency to um, be a little heavy like that this uh, laser so I weighed it down it, it holds it pretty good um, so if you're gonna float um, you're gonna want to Create yourself some crosshairs in your hoop. Makes life very easy. I'm kind of winging this here on the side. So <clears throat> if you if you have a laser, it's handy. You just line that right up. Doesn't matter if it's straight or not, you know, orient it however it needs to be. Very handy. And then you just put your target sticker right where it goes and pin it in place I also like to use um, let me get this real quick over here 505 temporary adhesive spray this stuff is awesome it does not leave a gummy residue on your garment or your project and um, it won't uh, gum up your needle this is great stuff and it's it's $12.99 at Hobby Lobby. I think it's about the same price at Walmart, but at Hobby Lobby, I use my 40% off coupon on this. So just, you know, if you put that on there, it's going to pretty much um, put some 505 on the back. I'll just show you how to do this. Just put a little bit on there, just like that. And then line up your crosshairs. And then line it up like this and it's gonna stick and stay that's perfect you see that 
Let me see. Can you see the laser? Let me get in close. Can you see the laser now? There. Yeah, that's great. And now it's going to stick on there, and when I go to pick it up, it's not going to shift around, and I can pin around the field, and I know that that is going to be lined up straight. Okay? These lasers are very, very handy um, if you're going to float your project. Um, if you don't have a laser, let's turn it off. If you don't have a laser, you're going to use the old fold and flop method here. So iron your project so you can, can you see the fold lines where I ironed it? And <clears throat> I just fold it in half and make myself a little mark on the back where the center is right there and line that up like this okay so I've, I've put my little center mark there I lined it up on that pencil mark and then fold it over and put it straight that's what you do if you don't have a laser it is free and then again you've got the 505 product on there or your spray adhesive and it can come up and you're ready to pin. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do that. If you don't do it that direction, you can also do it, of course, from the other way. You'll fold it in half with, um, make a crease with your iron, if possible. I don't recommend using that 505 on towels, guys. Sometimes it'll grab the loops and uh, on the toweling and that's it, it'll, it may pull them, so be careful with that. Or you do it long ways, like this. Okay? It's pretty simple. You got your mark, whoop, see I'm not on center there, like that. And then fold it this way. And that's how you float. It's on, and it pin, and it's going to be straight, just like that. The downside of that laser, um, it's not cheap. They're, they're fairly expensive. I think this one's like $50. Worth every penny as far as I'm concerned if, um, you know, you want your project to turn out right. You spent money on the thread, you spent money on the machine, you spent money on... To me, this is well worth the price. Machine embroidery gadgets are not inexpensive, but they're handy as all get out. I can't tell you the number of times I use that laser. I use it all the time. <laughs> If I've got batting hanging off the long arm, I've got way too much of it, or I pull it out from a roll on the bottom and flop it up over, I'll point this laser at it and give me a straight line that I can cut underneath on, on my batting. Um, so the to me, the laser is handy. I wanted to also show you, if you're going to be embroidering on a man's shirt where men are kind of square and flat on the top, that's pretty easy to do. You can lay that shirt out flat and you can tell by the center placket or fold, if it's a t-shirt, fold it in half, do an iron line and you can tell. There, that tells you pretty easy on men's clothing where to place, how far down it ought to go, right? I mean, get your husband or man to stand still and figure out where you want that thing to be placed. That's another way to do it. Women were a little bit different because we girls are curvy, okay? When I was in the military for 20 years and I had to put, I would dress my husband's shirt with the name tag and his ribbons and everything and really easy to do because they have a pocket line. They, you know, it's almost like they have a pocket guide. There's the top of the pocket. It sits there. And you got to pin in the name tag. That little pins with little frog clips on the back. For women, I had to do my shirt in the mirror. I couldn't do it. If I laid that blouse out flat on the bed and put my name tag and my ribbons on, trying to make sure that they're level across on the bottom as they make us do in the military, when I put the blouse on, they went like this, okay? Because I got curves. And so how do you embroider on a woman's um, garment to make sure that it's going to come out straight. Because if you just lay it out, like I'm in the middle right now of embroidering um, a logo onto some blouses for my DAR group. Well, all the women are all different sizes. They're all curvy. And 
how do I make sure that I'm going to get that logo straight? The easiest thing to do is if you have one, use a dress form. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so this is my dress form. This is Betsy McCall. Betsy um, is modeling a black ladies um, shirt. It's a Land's End. And this is, a, this is out of t-shirt fabric. And um, this is one of the ladies shirts that, that I'm going to embroider. Okay, And you can see I've put a snowman sticker right here. If you have a dress form and you're not sure where to place the design, first thing you need to do is to print out your design. And I trim my designs to within one quarter inch of the edge of the paper. And then I fold it, I pre-fold it into quarters. All right, you want to do that. Let me walk around behind Betsy here. So when you're doing this, <clears throat> If you don't have a dress form, you can use you, okay? And just go stand in a mirror and figure this out. But, so I have pinned this shirt and made sure I put the center placket down the center front of the, did I do that right? Let me look. Where's my center? There's my center line, okay? Sorry, don't mean to stand in front of the camera. Okay, so here's the center line of the garment, and you also want to line up the shoulder seam, okay? It doesn't matter if the blouse does not fit on the dress form. It doesn't have to. I've just laid it up on top of it. Let me remove this. I've just laid it up on top of it. The human rib cage is all the same. They all have a center front, and they all have a shoulder seam. So get that garment up on your dress form as close as you can, making sure you have the center seam and the shoulder up there. Then you just eyeball it and figure out where this needs to go. So I think it'll look good right about there. All right? Let me put this up here. So I think it's going to look good right there. It's kind of, it's, I'm centering it between the center seam and the shoulder seam, and it looks level to me. It's probably not level if I lay the shirt out on a table, okay? So then what I do, and you, you don't need, if you, you do need a sticker of some sort, you either need one of those ones that has an, an arrow on it, a crosshair with an arrow, or you need the snowman. So then I fold it down in half and fold it over in half and then take the bottom and line up the lower left hand quadrant of the sticker right there. And that's how I'm going to hoop this. I'm going to hoop it. I'm not going to hoop it. I'm going to float it. But now this is where the center needs to be. This is where the design is going to go. Um, it, using a laser from above is going to be a lot easier to, to float this, okay? It's just something you have to practice with and try to figure out how to work. Hey there. Okay, so I am in my old sewing room now, and this is the Janome MB7. Um, I don't know why we got this thing. <laughs> it really is handy, though, if you have to do um, something that has a lot of colors in it. Um, I did a, uh, a the birth announcement for a co-worker and it had seven colors and it was just great to put it on and let it go and do its thing. Um, so uh, if you have to hoop bigger projects or you're interested in, maybe you need something like that, that personal alignment laser is great if you're going to do a small project because it gets right down into where um, the field is on those smaller hoops. But if you're going to do a bigger project, like this dish towel. This is a great design from Urban Threads. Stupid dishes. Love this. This is like the fourth one of these I've done. And um, <clears throat> all different colors. And um, they make a bigger um, laser that clamps to the table. And uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a DIYer now that I got the hang of that. 
And so what I did, we have uh, one of those architect lamps that we got at like Harbor Freight. Let me turn this around a little bit so you can see. Got it at Harbor Freight for like $10, this thing. Okay. And then what I did was I bought, I went out, I will put all of this in the description box below, the links to all these things. Um, I went out and I bought um, a little crosshair laser, $18.30 for this. It's just a little laser light, okay, and it comes with a couple of black, uh, black and a red wire, and it makes a crisscross. And then, you know how on Amazon it suggests customers who bought that also bought this? Well, that's what I was looking for. Here's a little black on-off switch with red and black wires, and it's got a little, you can't see it in the picture real well, but it's got a little on-off switch. So I bought these, and when they came in, I just stripped like half an inch off of each red and black wire, twisted them together, stuck them together with painter's tape, <laughs> and uh, here it is, right here. And Okay, so this is one of the hoops for the Janome, and um, I mounted this thing onto... Can you see? I don't know if you can see. Let me get this up here. Okay, so I just, um, you know, red and black wires are taped together, and I stuck the, um, I stuck the little laser right there with some painter's tape. Can you see it right there? There it is. And um, I hit the on-off switch on this, and look at that. Can you see the crosshair? Let me turn out the light and you can see it better. Look at that. There. So this is a way, you know, um, this cost me all of, uh, I don't know, what, $30 maybe? Including the light. We already had the light, so it only cost me like um, $25 for the laser and the little battery pack. It takes two double A's. I love this. I use it all the time. So... Um, yeah, be a little inventive. So these were my tips and tricks to uh, help you guys do some alignment um, and orientation of your designs on your on your embroidery projects. I hope they were helpful. And um, if you have any tips or tricks, let me know. I mean, I'm always open to finding out new ways to do things. But um, anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and uh, enjoy your embroidery. We'll see you. Bye.